Probably like Jay Z, I think. Hip hop and Jay. Your oh, boy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let me just get some water real quick. Is that fine? That's fine. Hey, welcome to Snackdown. I'm Justin, and this is Andy. Hey, guys. What's up? And uh, today, I'm pretty excited because it's going to be Bakery Day. I thought you were so, just going to say bacon, but that wouldn't really kind of go. We should with... do a Bacon Day, though. I yeah. mean, we've talked about it before. Are you trying to say baking or bacon? Bacon. Oh, okay. Baking. Bacon with an apostrophe. Bacon. Bacon. Well, cool. So what do we... Um... Yeah, so we are, we've got some baked goods uh-huh. and from a local bakery. Yep. And we also have a drink that was left here for us by Travis. From two episodes ago. Yes. So, so he left it here for us to have on a future episode, and we figured it would go well with the baked goods because it is... You want to read off what it is, Andy? So it is a sour stout and imperial stout aged in bourbon barrels with marshmallow, cacao, graham cracker, and vanilla added. So it's from Brewery Tarot, and it's called the S'more BBLS, or as we'll call it, Beebles. S'more Beebles. <laughs> so it's got like a wax <laughs> covering. What is Beebles? Is that bourbon barrels? Can you look that up just so we don't sound... BBLS? Yeah, BBLS. Beebles. Basic, basic life support. <laughs> but it's a uh, Brewery Tarot, uh, and these guys are out of Placentia, California. Oh my gosh, these nerds. Have you ever seen the pH on a beer bottle before? No, I've not. Did you see that? So it's 3.8 over 12 in terms of grams per liter of lactic acid. That's I've never seen that before. It could be just our uh, or my um, you know ineptitude or me being naive. A, a beer sm- barrel? Maybe. Well, so it is aged in bourbon barrels. So it's a stout aged in bourbon barrels. So maybe that's what BBLS stands for. But BBL, at least, is a beer barrel. Not sure. Is the S small? No, it's a big S. Because on Beer Advocate, the the S is small. Maybe it's a bourbon barrel stout. I can't figure it out. I think it has something to do with bourbon barrel. Yeah. Yeah, so Travis left us that. I don't even know if he said to put it on a pot. I think he was just like, drink up, boys. Yeah, he's like, just have this at a later time. So we're like, okay, we'll do it now. And so it's got a wax seal on it, like an old letter from the king. I was wondering where you're going with that. And I was just going to let you stew in it. (laughs) So uh, Andy's cutting into the wax now. If I cut myself before vacation, so this I'm um, be very upset. <laughs> this this beer is sixteen percent. Is it? Yes. Oh shit! Right. So what would be the purpose of the wax seal? Looks or does it like completely keep in completely freshness? aesthetics? And it kind of like kind of lends to like the marshmallow sort of thing. I guess. Know? Yeah. All right. Well, let's drink up. Right. So yeah. So we got the s'more BBLS. Yeah. That we're gonna pour. We're gonna have it with some baked. What are you putting it in the water? I accidentally poured it in, like, already water. <laughs> this is miserable. You just watched me do it, too. Well, I was like, what is he so just, doing? But so I just pour it stop out you and just start time. fresh? I wouldn't even try that. It's going to be real gross. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, we figured because it's sweet, it would go good with some pastries. Yeah. yeah. So it smells weird, though. It's a lot to unpack. It's I more sna- sour on the nose than I would have imagined with all those, like, Other modifiers cacao, to it. marshmallow, graham cracker. I'm definitely smelling the cacao. It's like that just chocolate bitter, definitely picking up on the bitterness, and it's definitely sour. Yeah, it smells very sour. Interesting. It's like salmon sour and sweet. Um, That's pretty good. Yeah, it is good. It is good. Um, it's not my favorite, just because of the sour taste mm-hmm. that comes with it. Yeah. I'm really thrown off because I definitely taste the chocolate. What's the marshmallow doing? Like, I don't taste the marshmallow I at taste all. it, like, if you hold it on your tongue and kind of, like, swish it around, I, I can taste, like... Not individual things, but I can taste like a universal s'more. There doesn't appear to be a lot of carbonation on this, like just on on visual. But it, it, like the the taste is definitely like bitey, kind of a bitter, carbonated sort of flavor. I don't know. This is not. Um, it's not I, what I thought. It's not what I thought. I got to say, it's not my favorite beer. Good attempt. Mm-hmm. Also, we don't have a baseline of like an imperial sour stout. Yeah, it's true. It's not bad. Yeah. It's just not my favorite type of beer. Right. And I'm like, I'm not a big fan of like the sour. Um, Category. Yeah. But it is smooth. It's not, you know, unpalatable. It's definitely drinkable. It's just weird. A mix of sour and sweet yeah. together. My my tongue doesn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. It's shrugging. Can you taste graham cracker in here at all? No, I don't taste the graham cracker at all. And do you taste the marshmallow in here? I do a little bit. Like Ow. I, I don't what taste. What does marshmallow taste like? I don't taste marshmallow separate. <clears throat> okay. I taste like a s'more taste. Like a so mixture like a chocolate. of. So like a chocolate. A mixture of yeah, chocolate and s'more. marshmallow. Yeah, chocolate and marshmallow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mixture of chocolate and s'more. You're like, no. you just keep saying s'more. <laughs> and I don't yeah. know if I didn't know the title of it, if I would be able to pick yeah. out what this, it was. Like, if, if you didn't tell me it was s'more, 
I think I would just be like chocolate something. Like I can taste chocolate and sour, like sour mm-hmm. chocolate. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah. So just put it up to your mouth and then breathe in. I'm trying to breathe in my mouth and nose at the same time. Can you do that? <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard. <laughs> you'd think it would be easy. Like you'd think it'd be a yeah, just like open them both up. But yeah. it's like real, um, you know, it's real mm-hmm. flappy. It's like a valve flappy. opening and closing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> flappy valve. Flappy Joe Lappy. Cool. Well, I don't know how I feel about it. Me neither. It just tastes like sour chocolate, which is kind of weird. Like yeah. I've, there's, I've had bitter chocolate and sweet chocolate, not sour. So I feel like if anything, if any part of graham cracker or marshmallow resonates through, it kind of tastes like it has a little bit of like a honey flavor to it. So try it now and think stout, you know, or like a sour stout with cacao, which could be contributing in my mind to like the acidity. And then think honey too. Almost mead like, you know, but certainly not a drop. (laughs) (laughs) I opened the wrong valve. (laughs) Is it mead like? Are you a mead man? I think I don't like mead, and I think it is mead-like. <laughs> that could be why you don't like it, yeah. honestly. Yeah. It does taste meaty. No, 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 no. Don't say meaty. <laughs> <laughs> meaty. Okay, so let's get into the treats. Yeah, let's Because I got a lot of treats. Actual treats. Yummy, yummy treats. Stoked. So I went to North Syracuse to the Geddes Bakery. I think that's how you say it. Yeah, Geddes. Yeah. yeah. So I went to the Geddes Bakery. It's a Greek bakery. Um, and one of the main reasons I wanted to go there was because they have baklava. That's awesome. So I love baklava. And I don't think any of the other bakeries make baklava. You have to get baklava from like a Greek restaurant. So, because yeah. I looked at a bunch. And so when I was like thinking of a bakery to go to, you know, people from work had all these different suggestions. And you told them all to bug off. Did anyone yeah, say get us? No. Because no. I was like, I'm going to go to get us. And they're like, get us. They're like, why don't you go to this bakery or this bakery? Why and, don't you shut it? <laughs> and <laughs> I'm kidding. Hi, and everyone at work. There's a lot of popular bakeries <laughs> downtown Syracuse. Mm-hmm. And from looking at bakeries, it looks like if you're going for a specific pastry, you should go to like a specific bakery because they're all yeah. kind of good at one thing. So like, okay, this bakery over here is good at donuts. This one's good at croissants. This yep. one's good at bread. This one's good at danishes. So there's just like a lot to choose from. So I was kind of looking through it and I'm like, I've gone to get a bakery before and I really like it. And I want the baklava. So that's gonna, where I went. <laughs> so we're going to get that baklava. Yeah. So then I was like, what else am I going to get? So I got a couple things. So I don't know how we're going to start, whether we start with baklava or end with baklava. But I got a uh, baklava, there's cheese danish, Nice. there's an apple turnover, and a cherry turnover, and there's a cannoli. I love cannolis. Yeah. And then, so when I was checking out, she's like, do you want anything else? I'm like, okay, what's your like favorite thing? Like, what do people love? And she's like, well, you already got the baklava. Yeah. And then she was talking about this like cinnamon mm-hmm. bread that they make mm-hmm. that's on, that was on special, and they like crush up the cinnamon and they put the egg in, and it's almost like a, like a French toast type deal, like right in bread. Can I ask you a very personal question? What? Do you have a toaster? No. <laughs> oh, crap. Are you serious? I can broil it, though. Remember we broiled the crumpets? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're not broiling. <laughs> but um, We're going to boil if... Yeah. We can't throw any more heat in this apartment. Oh, that's true. Anyways. And we can't, now we can't take off our clothes because we're time-lapsing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> it was a bad choice. So, I was like, she's like, two loaves for six bucks. I'm like, well, how much is one loaf? She's like, you just might as well get the two because you can just freeze one. So when you said, you you know, you're talking to the lady, what you were really mean to say was you were talking to the sales lady because she made a hell of a sale on you. Yeah, she did. You know, how much is one? Three dollars? <laughs> yeah, she and didn't even tell the, me. Yeah, yeah. She was just like, you get might the, as well get just the get two. two. Yeah. And so while I was there, though, there was, you know, there was other people in line and stuff. And some lady was like, what pie should I get? And I guess they are, according to the, the lady behind the counter, they have the number one rated lemon meringue pie in syracuse interesting so That's... i mean that was a thing but i'm like i'm not gonna buy a whole pie right okay so what one should we start with dude this is your this is your rodeo let's start it with whatever you want to do let's start with the cheese danish so it's okay. delicious yeah let's do it so there's one each so justin and i if you guys can't see which you probably can't um we are kind of like doing like the arms around mm-hmm. very so well uh, what kind of shape is that is that a real shape eyes like cartoon yeah. ghost looks eyes like a cartoon ghost yeah Mm. Mm. It's glazed over with something. It's light and fluffy. That's some like old country cheese filling, you know? That's not just like out of a can. Like they made mm-hmm. that from scratch and yeah. that's beautiful. It tastes delicious. What kind of pastry do you think this is? Like bread? I'm not sure. It's so light. I don't know how they make like puff pastry. I mean, it like... probably has to do with the yeast, the amount of egg that's in there, like how they're folding it. Because they might be like kneading it and folding it. and Wow. 
So what have you been up to? <laughs> what have I been up to? Yeah. You've been eating? You've been snacking anywhere good? Yeah, I went to the press room pub the other day, using up another one of my wing coupons. <laughs> I've got a lot to go. <laughs> when do those expire? Do they? Uh, December 31st. But we have nine left. We've used four. You and your brother are gone? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a cool place. We had these like deep fried cheese something or others. They weren't like cheese curds because all the cheese inside was like liquidy. And you like dip it in this hot sauce. It was delicious. We got two orders of them. Justin, are you trying to say mozzarella sticks? It wasn't a mozzarella <laughs> stick. I don't even know what it was. Were they like nuggets almost? They were like little balls. Mm-hmm. Almost like you would think a... Uh, deep fried cheese curd would be but it was like pure liquidy cheese even after sitting there for like 15 minutes it was still like liquid it was really do that i have no idea but it was really tasty but yeah it's a cool place it's built in an old newspaper building and that's why they call it press room pub that was so good it was delicious so a danish is a multi-layered laminated sweet pastry in the vienna soiree tradition the concept was brought to denmark by austrian bakers and since has developed into a Danish specialty. Nice. So it's like a croissant. It's it's a variant of puff pastry made with laminated yeast, which is why it gives what? it like kind of like a glazed look. I don't know what laminated yeast is. I don't know either. It, it sounds like... It creates a texture, a layered texture. That's what I like, the layered, like that puff pastry layered texture. Yeah. It's so good. And then Danish pastries were brought to the U.S. by immigrants. Of and course. And they were often topped with fruit or cream cheese filling did the u.s make it so that they were cream cheese or fruit? according to that like quick thing i mean i'm just trying to plan for us when we go on our snack around the world snack around europe mm-hmm. i mean like i don't want to get to denmark and be like uh yeah i'll have a cheese danish and be like cheese danish <laughs> yeah <laughs> no one laughs like that there but so yeah. in sweden danish pastry is typically made in spandauer style i'm gonna be so bad at this um but it's <laughs> often with vanilla custard Ooh. In the UK, they used like jam, custard, apricots, cherries, raisins, flaked almonds, pecans, caramelized toffee, and okay. cardamom is often added to increase aromatic sense of sweetness. In the US, we use fruit and cream cheese. So we're kind of a mix of everyone. Yeah. Okay. So like we didn't do it ourselves, like the Danish immigrants did. So it's still like when it's they brought over there. the, this is like a Danish. Right. So when we go to Europe, it's not going to be this folded over like boat like thing no. with like nothing on the inside. We just kind of like eat it differently in each country. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I hit my tooth with my glass. The old tulip tooth now. Not a fan. I'm not a fan of this beer. <laughs> Dustin just made a yucky Sorry, face. Travis. Sorry, Trav. All right. So <laughs> what should we have next? Um, well, let's, let's kind of st- Day Danishy, you know what I mean? I'm gonna go with the uh, turnovers. turnovers. Okay, yeah, cool. these are probably better warm, but so this first one is that looks like apple, apple, and then you said it's apple and cherry. Yeah, oh my gosh, yeah, good like granulated sugar, you know, mm-hmm. dusted on top. And... So the bread, the breading for this one's a little different. And you picked these up today, right? Yeah, mm. this is so good. Do you want to move on to that other stout? Sure, you all finished with yours? Yeah, I'm done. Okay, all right, perfect. Let's uh, move on. <laughs> So one thing that you and I don't really talk about too much anymore is music, right? Yeah. You and I have kind of like thrown, like lobbed, you know, hey, you like this band? Yeah, I like that band. And like we have our like mutual connections. Mm-hmm. Like I know that you're a huge national fan, right? Oh yeah, they're the best. I'm not a huge national fan. That's crazy. I don't know. I feel like there's like an emotional connection and I just, it, I never like latched onto them, right? Mm-hmm. With, in terms of music. I'm sure they're a quality band that... I, I'm sure I would like under the right circumstances, but I feel like if you like a band, it has to incubate for a little bit and then you like them, mm-hmm. you know? You can't just like fall in love with them. Yeah. You can fall in love with a band if you're like hearing them live or whatever, Yeah, but that's an experience in itself. Like yep. You already have an emotional attachment to them. There's some bands that are even better live than recorded. Agreed. What are you listening to now? Have you ever listened to Frightened Rabbit? No. They're excellent. What? A lot of national. <laughs> See? Always. Um, I've been listening. I've been pulling out my old "Me Without You" albums lately. Oh, really? Yeah. Like "Gentlemen," like "Catch for Us the Foxes" and "Brother so, Sister." So "Gentlemen" is like the only song that I know. Really, and yeah. I like it. Like yeah. I have a CD player in my car, and I've recently decided to start using it. So, I, like, we'll pull out one album and start listening to it. Mm-hmm. So I pulled out two "Me Without You" albums, and I've been just listening to them over and over again for like a month or so. Why? Well, what have you been listening to? You heard of Lucero? Yes. Them. You know, always like I, I listen to Elliot Smith, and I like play songs to my kid all the time. Which is, it's dark. It's dark music. Um, Band of Horses. Oh, yeah. De- mm-hmm. Depeche Mode. Do you like Depeche Mode? Mm, I don't know. John Prine, of course, always. Yeah. People are going to give me crap about that. But Have um, you ever listened to, do you ever listen to First Aid Kit? First Aid Kit? Mm-hmm. No. No. I've been listening to them a lot. I listen to them while I work a lot. What's First Aid Kit? It's like a folk band of two sisters. You ever heard of Hot Chip? 
No. Okay. We really don't listen to the same music at all. We don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I was telling you off the pod that I've been watching this show, Legion, and they'll be... Like Legion, like L-E-S-I-O-N? No, Legion. <laughs> like, uh, hey, Justin, you've got a Legion on your back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just a mole, <laughs> but we're going to watch but it. But I... Uh, I've been watching this. Sh- oh, you're reading. You're already in the cherry. <laughs> <laughs> I saw like the innards of your turtle were sque- like sneaky. squeeze out when it was red, and I'm like, sneaky, that's not sneaky. apple. <laughs> so yeah, we're on to the. It's a uh, red apple cherry. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been watching this show Legion, and songs will pop up that I'm like, wow, that's a really good song, or like, I wonder who that band is because I really like that song. Noah Howley, Holly, the mm-hmm. guy that wrote the show, writes the music for the the series. Mm-hmm. And, like, he writes all these songs, and they're all, like, different styles of music. Like, some of them are, like, indie. Some of them are, like, rock. So you're, like, looking up. You're, like, oh, what's this band? It's like, yeah. oh, it's And, like, guy. it's just the soundtrack. Like, they're all on the soundtrack of the show. Mm-hmm. So it's just that. I'm, like, oh, that kind of sucks because it's not, like, a band that I'm, like. But th- those Danishes were excellent. I said Danish, but I meant to. Uh, turnover? Those turnovers were very, very, very good. Oh, yeah. Um, a turnover is a type of pastry made by placing a filling on a piece of dough, folding the dough over, sealing, and then baking it. Turnovers can be sweet or savory and are often made as a sort of portable meal or dessert, similar to a sandwich. That's weird. I've never had a turnover savory a sandwich. turnover. Although I think I saw one there. It looked like they had like green kind of filling, so it looked like maybe like a vegetable. Gross. I can't imagine eating like a sandwich in a turnover. You sure it wasn't pistachio? It might have been pistachio. So do you recall like the weirdest way you ever heard about a band? Um, so I went to see Frightened Rabbit in Rochester. And they were playing with a band called the Augustines. Mm-hmm. And as soon as the guy from the Augustines started singing, I was like, this sounds exactly like this band I loved called Pella. Mm-hmm. And they had broken up. Just basically, they ran out of money. And I'm like, this guy just sounds like so much like Pella. Is it the guy? And so like once they were done playing, we looked it up. And that band, Pella, just reformed under a new name. Really? And so it was like the same people. And I'm like, this is fantastic. <laughs> and so I listened to them. And so I went back to Rochester a couple months later and watched them. Mm-hmm. It was like, They were the headlining band, so they played. And then they played, like, Pella songs. And I was, like, singing along. And, like, one of the guys, like, looked at me and was like... Why do you I know? Saw, that? saw that I was singing it, and he was, like, super happy. But then they, like, got down. And it was, like, super intimate concert. Like, they got down with everyone, mm-hmm. like, on the floor. And everyone, like, circled around them. And they did played you, like, some, like, like... give you the microphone? No, but they played, like, old Pella songs. And it was... Like the best like experience, but what, it was what like genre I, was it? It's kind of like indie, like indie rock, uh-huh. I guess. But like, I, if I local, hadn't gone to that like Fright Rabbit show, no, no, they're they're big. I think they're from New York City. Ooh. Um, <laughs> but I have if I hadn't gone Man to Bob that yeah. Fright and Rabbit show and then just heard them singing, I don't know if I ever would have heard. Were, were they missing any members when they did the rebrand? No, at least not that I'm aware of. Maybe. I think they were just kind of like rebranding. The music was a little different. Like I still liked Pella a lot better than the Augustines. They kind of more like had a more mainstream rock vibe, like U two ish. But it was like several years removed from Pella. Interesting. But Pella was just the best. You're like Man Man. Man Man. Yeah. No. All know. over the place. I don't know. These guys are from like Philly, and they wear like war paint. <laughs> like the, <laughs> the the main the front man plays piano and sings, and he's got a little bit of a gravelly voice and. Uh, it's good. Yeah. It's all it's crazy. I like a good gravelly voice. Yeah. It's like borderline like dada, like just random insane, you know, yeah. just craziness. But hmm. uh, it's good. It's a good band. I saw them in Ithaca and they uh, everyone there smelled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know how like some concerts you go to you're like, "Oh crap, this got the this caught the attention of the smelly people." Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it was one like of those Like everyone smells like sour beer and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sour or something. Sour armpits. Yeah. Um sour armpits, sour beer. Yeah. A little bit of marijuana. A little bit of marijuana cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we we shouldn't spend this entire episode talking about music because just in the same sense of you and I going, oh, do you really like this band? No, not really. Oh, do you like this band? Not really. Everyone who's listening is probably less in touch with what you and I listen Mm -hmm. to. But yeah, everyone should go listen to The National because they're the best band. Oh, I was going to say John Bunch. John Bunch is good. But The National is the best band that exists. Excuse me? What did you... Are you serious? You mm-hmm. think so? You think it's better than John Bunch? Oh, yeah. Posthumously, you're going to say that. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, this, uh, thanks for I'll joining us. This has been the last stone. episode. <laughs> this yeah. has been the last episode of Snackdown. Um, if you're listening to this, he said write it on his tombstone. Um, this is kind of what we're talking about. If you're listening to this episode at his tombstone, um, if you can just kind of scribble in or scratch in, if sense field rules, R-U-L-E-Z, on his tombstone and deface it, I mean, I'm cool with that. So let's move on here. 
uh, both in conversation and in pastry. So, yeah, so everything we've had so far is delicious. Mm-hmm. So I say we go for the cannoli and we end with the best, the baklava. Baklava is like my favorite treat. So oh. uh, that's what I got my birthday. When's what? your birthday, by the way? In March. One year oh, I was like, right, why yeah. would I get cake? I don't really like cake. And as an adult, I'm like, I can just get whatever I want. I want baklava. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's split this cannoli. Did you say at some point someone you know makes good baklava in mm-hmm. person? Mm-hmm. Is it your mother? No, my friend Liza, shout out to Liza, she listens now. Shout out Liza. Uh, I used to work with her, and uh, she needed like corrugated cardboard. So anytime I would get some, I would set it aside for her. And then one day, there was just this huge pile of baklava on my desk with like a thank you note. Like I froze half of it, and I like ate it every day. And like when I got all of it, I was like, will baklava get old? You know, like if you eat something every day, you like get yeah. tired of it. Yeah. It didn't. It was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. You're like, I won't have to freeze it because it doesn't matter at yeah. this point. Yeah. It was so good. That's awesome. So this, I got the cannoli with the chocolate chips because why not? This looks delicious. It smells cannoli-ish. Do you like straight plain cannolis or do you like the ones with the chocolate chips? I will take either or, mm-hmm. honestly. It's got like a nice dusting of powdered sugar on it. Yeah, very nice dusting. I'm making a mess of myself as I eat it. <laughs> Justin's messing himself. So um, that second stat was way better. I'm sorry. Yeah, so we're, the second stout we're drinking is a Founders Breakfast Stout. Yep. I think uh, this, you know, these episodes have kind of reaffirmed that more expensive doesn't always mean better, right? Mm-hmm. More rare, more expensive doesn't always mean better. But in terms of the West Vlaterran... I was going to say, in the terms for, of that, yes. Sure does. Sure does mean way better. <laughs> absolutely delicious. Yeah, that was amazing. But, I mean, that's also an opinion, because someone out there might think it's delicious. I mean, we're, bo- we're both not sour drinkers. Right. So. And we have to remember that opinions are like podcasts. Everyone's got one. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. So this is an interesting story. Story Not time? a story time. Mini story I mean, time. I'm talking about this beer. Okay. So the reason that I have this founder's story time. All right, we'll do a story time. Okay. So the reason that I have this stout is because I went to the grocery store and bought it. Now, the odd thing about that is... This is the worst story ever. <laughs> I, did not, I did not buy it for the podcast. I bought it for myself. And it's the first time I texted Andy. This is the first time I ever have bought an, a non-IPA mm. beer for myself. So We're changing him, people. Yes, because of the podcast, you know, we've had a couple of different beers. And I think it was that beer that we had with Anthony, that like coffee stout that we had. that was like really good. But um, I was just like... I was just sitting on my Lunch couch. Lady June's yeah. from uh, IBU Brewery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like sitting on my couch and I'm like, all I want right now is a coffee stout of some sort. Like That's I was awesome, just like man. craving for it. That's awesome. So I went out and got it. So when I went to get these pastries at Geddes Bakery, I got out of my car and the parking lot smelled good. <laughs> <laughs> they were pumping it out. Yeah. There must have been like a vent. I don't know. When I like got out of my car, I'm like, oh my gosh, it smells so good. And like, I like it. As soon as you open the door, it's like, you know, my hair blew back and it was just like pastry (laughs) smell. (laughs) And you're like, I'm going to smell great for the rest of the week. Yeah. Man, if I ever worked in like a pastry shop of some sort and like smelling that stuff all day. You'd get sick. I would just be eating too much of it. Or like. I feel like I'd get sick of it. Or maybe they don't smell it. Maybe. When I used to work in hospitals. Become nose blind to it, kind of. Yeah. When I when I used to work in hospitals, I mean, like, when I first started volunteering, I was like, whoa, it smells like a hospital. You know what I mean? That, like, <laughs> just disinfectant, weird smell. Yeah. I can't smell that anymore. Yeah. Even, like, years after, like, going back to it, like, I don't smell that smell anymore. Do I smell weird? No. You sure? Not that I smell. Okay. I'm nose blind to Andy. <laughs> That's how good of friends we are, people. <laughs> we're pod brothers. Brothers? <laughs> no, we're not doing brothers. <laughs> Brothers. Brothers. Brothers for life. Oh, so listen to Hot Chip because there's a song called Brothers. It's a ridiculous song, but listen to one album straight through. And mm-hmm. if you don't find a pop or a gem that you're like, oh, I got to. If you don't find one, then you can kick me in the, I don't know. Listen to the album One Life Stand by Hot Chip. That's, ever, get- that, that's actually everyone's homework. Everyone's homework is listen to the album One Life Stand by Hot Chip. No, I feel like if anyone has homework, it should be listen to the national. Listen to all of their stuff. Listen to all of, <laughs> heck that. Listen to all of our stuff. It's true. If you haven't done that, that's you Go only back. have one job. Listen, <laughs> listen to all of ours. Okay, should we get in this baklava? Because it's the best part. I'm, I'm just trying to, yeah, I'm just trying to like stave you off from it. All right, let's do some baklava. Let's do some baklava. You doing some B, bro? I'm gonna do some B. Doing some B. Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. this has extra nuts. This has extra H. Are you a honey or simple syrup? Are you not a nut person? Do are, you nut- to, are you like allergic to anything? No. You guys have an intolerance for eggs. Yeah. 
Although some, this is awful. Sometimes when I eat fresh fruit, my lips and back of my throat start like itching and tingling. That's like not good, right? Yeah, that's not good. I'm, I don't nothing like, like closes up or swole. Nothing, sw- yeah, like nothing gets up. swole other than my muscles. <laughs> other, <laughs> other than my beefy boy muscles. Like I, I get so swole when I eat this. That's <laughs> yeah. swelling yeah. and it's not good. These cherries have double protein, dum-dum. My, my throat gets so swole. <laughs> hey, honey. How's my throat look? It's just like, um, pretty anaphylactic. <laughs> yeah. You should get help. It's, yeah, I got help. <laughs> it's called these gains. <laughs> it's called tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> this looks great. This simple syrup is dripping off of here. It's just honey. Uh, not syrup? always honey. Hmm? Mm. Do you not even know? Yeah, not all baklava has uh, honey. Sometimes it's simple syrup. Mm. So are like, are the people who make this just like, all the Greek ladies from Greek Fest, and they're like, well, I guess we're going to go back to our <laughs> It is so good. It is It is very good. This is one of the best baklavas I've ever had. Mm-hmm. I love baklava because it's so rich in flavor and sweetness, mm-hmm. but it's a more natural sweetness than like cake frosting or like stuff mm-hmm. like that. But the, like the honey and like the natural sweetness of baklava mm-hmm. is rich, but it's not like in a fake way. It's just like a natural richness. Hey, y'all, can we count how many times Justin just said natural and rich and sweet? Nine. So this one is amazing because the bottom portion, even before you get to the nuts, is very sopped. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But then it's so fresh that you also have like the top like three layers as super crisp. Like Mm -hmm. it's not like, oh, everything's like sopping, you know, wet or everything's too dry. It's definitely got that balance. I mean, those... Those top layers have such a nice crispness because it is so fresh that, like, this is just fantastic. So baklava is a rich, sweet dessert pastry made of layers of phyllo filled with nuts, chopped nuts. So it's usually walnuts, I think. I believe that. A lot of times it's walnuts. Maybe maybe some almonds. What else? Sweetened and held together with syrup or honey. Nice. It's characteristic of cuisines of the Levant and the broader Middle East, along with the Caucasus, Balkans, Maghreb. In Central Asia. Oh. It says the oldest recipe that resembles a similar dessert is the honey-covered bakery layered dough dessert placenta of Roman times. Disgusting. <laughs> I was like, that what is awful. placenta? Man, placenta I can't wait cake. for that. I can't wait for that sweet placenta. <laughs> yeah. Placenta is a dish from ancient Rome consisting of many dough layers interspersed with a mixture of cheese and honey and flavored with bay leaves. Did you say bay leaves? Bay leaves. Oh, so it's herbaceous. Yeah, placenta. I don't like the word placenta Herba- being herbaceous used. Herbaceous placenta. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag summer of herbaceous placenta. So I guess baklava is not like straight up Greek. Yeah, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. We had a baklava once at work and uh, Julie Tabuli, who was a cook, was visiting. She's like a TV cook. Julie Tabuli? Mm-hmm. As in like Tabuli the food? Yeah, maybe that's just her TV name. But she made baklava. It was like the day after my birthday, and she visited the studio, but mm-hmm. she's like, I brought baklava for everyone. I'm like, yes. And instead of honey, she used like an orange mm-hmm. something or other, like an orange syrup, and it was delicious. Like, it's very, it was very different, but like, mm. Did you meet her? Yeah. Were you like, hey, JT. JT, can I have some more of that baklava? Yeah. That's not even her name, though. No, it can't be. Her if it was, Julie. like, she had one purpose in life. Your path has been set. Your last name's Tabuli, so. Born Julie Ann Sagir. She lives in Marietta, New York. I think my boss went to her house. He was like, hello, Julie Ann Sagir. And she was like, don't call me by my birth name. She, like, stabs him and hides him in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> no one's supposed to know. Yeah, not even Wikipedia. I'm trying to find the person who put that up there initially. So that was, we're all delicious. Yeah. What was your favorite of that pastry box? I hate to say it, but the baklava. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, the baklava was very, very good, and I think that's one of their favorites there. Yeah, but the cheese danish, man, I just love cheese danish. You know, so baklava typically ranges for me from okay or pretty good to incredible. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think I've ever had a cheese danish where I've been like, this blows my mind. Yeah, but you know, there's also a huge range. They do, they do keep pretty well, so it makes it a yeah. little easier. But and then turnovers, kind of a similar thing. Mm-hmm. But I feel like they're kind of like middle range. You can't have like yeah, the yeah. worst ton- turnover in the world unless yeah. there's like obvious mold on it or whatever. Mm-hmm. But even if it's just totally dried I think that, out, it's I still think the palatable. reason for that is like some of the pastries are pretty easy to make. Mm-hmm. So I think even like the cheap gas station cheese danish that you get that comes in cellophane, oh, plastic. Yeah, 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 I think it's still decently good to make a puff pastry and throw some cheese in there. Right next to your um, Slim Jim hot AF. Yeah, and like you know, like McDonald's makes an apple pie, basically an apple pie turnover. Right, 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 right. Um, right. 
the pie. And obviously these are better, these fresh ones from sure. the bakery. Yeah. But I think yeah, like, you're not buying down. like a yeah. cheap baklava at the gas station. You know, right. really the only way you can get baklava is from a restaurant or a bakery. And, and so maybe that's why like, it like raises it higher than the rest. Raises it higher and then like, but the ingredients are like, as long as you have the main ingredients for baklava, even if like you totally messed up on like layering it or something, it's still going to be a big sop and thing full of simple syrup or honey mm-hmm. and, and nuts and phyllo dough. So yeah. But yeah, and I, I like this drink better too. Founder's breakfast stout. Yeah. Sorry, Trev. So the Gotta breakfast stout is, um, it's a double chocolate coffee oatmeal stout. I mean, it was just, it was good, you know? Mm-hmm. Nice. Cool. So should we just try this bread real quick? Should we toast it? Should we take a break and try to toast it? We could broil it like we did the crumpets. No, no, no. Let's not do that. I don't want to melt, dude. It's only going to take like five minutes. We're going to take a break. I'm going to melt. I'm going right. to take a nap on the couch. All right. We'll take a break. Bye. Hey, we're back. Hey, we're back. So we broiled it. They're not the crispiest, but they are warm. The first order of business on the Patreon is crowdfunding and toaster. <laughs> are you a toaster guy? Do you like bagels? I love bagels. Bagels and cream cheese. Mm. Why don't you have a toaster at home? I should probably get one, right? The dog pooping. Nice. So I don't get to see the dogs pooping. So you're just kind of like enjoying snacks and drinking beer and watching dogs poop? The one dog's pooping and the other dog is like staring at it. Well, I'd probably stare at it if another dog was pooping. And now the lady's picking it up. So, snack down. <laughs> so, we got some broiled up some toast here. Do it this up. This is a, like, cinnamon swirled. It's got, like, egg in it. Andy says the egg in this is fine, though. Well, we'll see. I mean, like, most baked goods are going to have egg in them. Mm-hmm. It's delicious. Mm-hmm. It's not that sweet, though. No, not as sweet as I thought. I can taste the egg, though. I was kind of half expecting it to have, like, raisins or something in there. Mm-hmm. It's not that sweet. It's kind of savory, almost. High cinnamon. Low sugar. Eggy. Goodness. This lady salesman. This is really good, though. I mean, it's, it's bready it. enough that you can use it as bread, mm-hmm. but it's also like cinnamon eggy enough that you could use it. What would you use it as bread for? Would you make a sandwich out of this? I think I could make a sandwich out of this. Turkey? Yeah, it'd be pretty good. Really? Yeah. I mean, like you said, it's not very sweet. Right. It does taste like French toast a little bit, like she said. It's got that bread egg taste to mm-hmm. it with a little bit of cinnamon. Yeah, it's like, um, it's almost like French toast, but there's no like egg pockets. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like very uniform. So could you eat an entire loaf of this? I'm going to have to now. <laughs> so what do you got going on this weekend? Well, I'm fishing with my dad after this. Nice. We're going on vacation. We're going to go up to the Adirondacks and just bug out. It's been about two years since oh, we went nice. on vacation. So uh, we're going to see how that goes. And um, Cool. So speaking of the Adirondacks, yesterday... Yeah. Maybe, it was, maybe it wasn't just yesterday. Maybe over the weekend. When all your troubles were so far away? Mm-hmm. Right. I've decided to become a 46er. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go on. You're going to start a 46er podcast? No, I'm going to try to become a 46er. Do you know what a 46er is? Yeah, you go up all the mountains. And yeah, stuff. there's 46 peaks in the Adirondacks. <laughs> For those of you that don't live in New York, there's 46 peaks in the Adirondacks. Mm-hmm. And if you complete climbing all of them, you can like register and become known as like a 46er. Is this the honor system? Yes, it's based on our system. You don't have to like take selfies of all the... No, you have to post when you finish the first peak and then when you finish the last peak. So the Adirondacks for the uninformed or... um, Anyway, it's it's a huge area that's um, just northeast of Syracuse and basically takes up... It's huge. I want to say a quarter of New York. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's massive. There's mountains. Just mountains. It's forest. It's... Lakes, there's lakes. a bunch of lakes. Um, but yeah, it's it's amazing. It's beautiful. Lake Placid, where the uh, Olympics were, it's like at the most northern mm-hmm. part of the Or the, uh, like the scary movie, Lake Placid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With the shark? I think it was an alligator. Really? Wasn't it? I don't know. Well, how would a shark get in Lake Placid? How would an alligator get into Lake Placid? <laughs> True. <laughs> You're like, that's illogical. <laughs> well, well, Justin, <laughs> touche. But yeah, I wanted to become a 46er, and I heard there's a difference between winter 46ers and summer 46ers. And oh, you're just a summer 46er? Yeah, I guess it's <laughs> it's very... <laughs> the amount of winter 46ers cares. are, like, much smaller because it's much Dude, harder to climb. what jerks, yeah. you know? Oh, okay. So I guess you've just kind of, like, been up the mountain. <laughs> Let me guess, you just jogged up in the summer. Yeah. And then there's like, the, there's, like, the snow 46ers, like... 
oh, you did it winter, but there wasn't much snow. It's like, how, how much snob, how much more snobby can you get? But I think, Sorry. like, I mean, it is harder to do in the winter. Justin, if and you... And it's tough to get through. I wasn't really thinking of the amount of mountains. I'm like, 46, you know, I can climb it. But I was thinking, if I did two a year, that would still take 23 years for me to climb. If you want to be a 46er, don't just do two a year, for sure. Yeah. But some of them are connected. So uh-huh. when you're climbing to one, bang out like you hit like three. two or three on the uh-huh. way. You know uh-huh. what I mean? But like if you were doing it all year and you did some in the winter, you could get it done a lot quicker. We were looking at them the other day at work because uh-huh. I was telling everyone that I was going to be a 46er. <laughs> the quickest time that someone did all 46 peaks was three and a half days. That's just recent, right? They just broke I don't the record. Remember. But that's insane. Yeah. I did Whiteface, and it was an eight-hour total hike. Some of them are Definitely longer than Definitely a flashlight, that. you know? That's Nuts. crazy. Yeah. Part of me is, like, imagining, like, the, the 46er site. Is it, like, stuck in the 90s in terms of, like, is it, like, an Angel Fire website? Like it's pretty old. Like, super old. And yeah. you can get, like, it looks like a Boy Scout patch when you complete it. Yeah. Handed down by, like, Teddy Roosevelt himself. Mm-hmm. It's like, ooh, a trailblazer like myself. You're like, He really? signed, like, a million of them back in the day, and they're still, like, using the... <laughs> they're like, wow, how much is this worth? He's like, nothing. He signed, like, literally millions of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Well, good luck to you. So when are you... St- <laughs> I think I'm going to start in, like, two weeks. So here's the snack pack homework. We're going to be uh, closely watching Justin in his 46er. Now, what if you're a mixed blood 46er? What if you like do like half them in the summertime, half them in the wintertime? I think that's fine. Like, there's no like distinction. No, but like, do you have like, is it like a halfling sort of thing? Like, do you get like more street cred than a summer person? Probably. Or is it... Like, if you are talking to actual 46ers and you could say like, oh, I did this one in the winter. Is know? there a meeting? though? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, dude, thanks for bringing... You yeah, know. so thank you to Gettys Bakery thanks for, for making Bakery. delicious treats. Yep, thanks for the sales lady for making you buy two loaves of bread. Because mm-hmm. now Andy gets one. My, my family gets one. <laughs> um, thanks for the uh, the breakfast stout. Yep. Travis, thank you very much for the s'more sour imperial stout. It was an experience. It was an experience, yep. Now we know what we like. <laughs> <laughs> so appreciate that. Um, thanks for listening to our musical and um, experience rants. Mm-hmm. So we appreciate that. And thanks for being a part of the Snack Pack. We appreciate you taking time out of your week and uh, listening to us and yeah. joining us on the social groups and um, in your own daily routine. Yeah, you can always um, private message, direct message us suggestions for things if you want. You know, if you want to see us try something, if you've got good ideas, you can send us stuff too, as long as it's not homemade or something, as long as yep. it's like package sealed. Yeah, DM us for the P.O. Box. and um, We'll snack up on that and shout you out. The old snack and shout. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Thanks for listening today. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can find this episode and others like it on Spotify and iTunes. And you can go to our website at www.snackdownpod.com. Let's do like a really drawn out one. Like, as long as we can hold our breath. Let's see who can last longer than the other one. Snack you later.